In this video, we'll continue working with wrapped sets of elements by working a little bit deeper with elements and attributes. So I've opened up the finished file in the browser so you can see what we're going to accomplish here. We've got a basic header followed by a select list and a graphic. When we go ahead and choose from the combo box, Dairy, the graphic changes and we add some additional text in the form of this bulleted list. And although we could continue in this exercise to do all of them, we'll only do dairy and grain. As you can see here, having made the grain selection, we're now looking at a different unordered list and a different graphic. You'll need to open up exercise 4 inside of the chapter 4 working with wrapped sets directory. If you look at the script block at the top, inside of the document ready function, we declare a variable called dairy, and below that, another variable called grains. And each of the two variables are set to an array of simple objects that consist of two name value pairs called serving and measure. And this is the data that we'll access when we dynamically create that unordered list. So take a moment to examine the dairy and grain variables and then go ahead and place your cursor at line 61. Before we start writing the jQuery, we'll take a look at what it is we want to accomplish and how we might do that. The idea is that the user might change something in the combo box, such as fruit or dairy, etc. And when that change event happens, we want to respond to that event by writing a function that determines what was selected in that combo box. For example, if the selected item is dairy, then we'll swap out the current image for an image of skim milk. Then we'll dynamically create an unordered list that loops through those dairy objects and lists the items in that object. Let's begin by responding to the change event of the combo box. The select element that creates the combo box is called food groups underscore CB. So we need a jQuery selector that will select that element uh, within the DOM and then respond to the change event of that object. We'll start with a call to the jQuery function and then we'll pass to it the proper selector, which we just saw was a tag whose ID was foodgroups underscore CB. So now we have our selector, jQuery locates that for us, and then we invoke a method of the jQuery object called change. And we pass to that method a function that determines what will happen when that event is dispatched. So the first thing that we need to do in our method is determine which of the options in the select menu was selected. So we're just going to run a single if block here and then one more else if, because remember, we're only writing two here. We're just going to write the responses for dairy and grain. So we'll just leave it at these two for now. So the first if block will determine if the option chosen was dairy. So here again, in order to locate that option, that selected option, we'll use a jQuery command. So there's the call to the jQuery method, and we're interested in the selected option of the combo box. And that combo box had an ID of food groups underscore CB. So once again, quotes for the selector, a pound sign to denote an ID selector, and it was called food groups underscore CB. So there's the selector, but it's not quite complete because it only gets us to the select box. And what we're interested in is the children, which are the options. So let's take a second look at that. That's the selector for food group CB, so that gets us here. But we're really interested in these options. So that's why we appended to the food group CB the option tag. But here again, we're not being quite specific enough because we do not want all the options. We only want the option that's selected. The next thing we want to do is now that the jQuery has queried the document object model and returned to us the selected option of the food groups combo box, we want to see if its text is equal to the string dairy. And that tells us if that is the option that was selected. If dairy was the selected option, then we want to take an image, and that's this image right here, the one whose ID is food groups image. And we want to change the source attribute of that image right here to point to a different graphic. We'll be pointing to a graphic of skim milk. Inside the if block, we'll write a jQuery to get that graphic and reset its source attribute. So first, we need the jQuery to actually get that graphic. So here we are, a standard syntax for the jQuery method. 
we quote the selector, and that selector will get by ID, so the pound symbol, again, to denote the ID, and it was called food group image. So we have the selector. Now we need a jQuery method that will allow us to set an attribute of this image tag that we've just located with this selector. And that method is called ATTR. And this method will either retrieve a value of an attribute or it will set the value of an attribute. Many jQuery methods work in this manner. In other words, that's the method attribute and it will either get or set. So jQuery will determine whether it's a method that should retrieve a value or set a value based on the number of arguments you pass to it. So if you pass to it one argument, it retrieves the value. If you pass to it two arguments, the name and the value, it typically sets the value. What we'll do is a shortcut technique to set the value. Here's the call to the attribute method. And then we'll pass to it the name value pair, indicating the name of the attribute we want to set and the value. And that's done with the curly braces that you see there. So the name of the attribute is source. And the value we want to set is a graphic called skim underscore sm, and it's a GIF. Now we'll go ahead and dynamically generate that unordered list based on the dairy object up here and the various items within it, milk, yogurt, pudding, and so forth. So I've terminated the last jQuery statement, and we'll come down a line and create the next one. Now in this case, our selector is going to be this div whose ID is food list. You can see that it's an empty div right now. So we put our selector in there. And don't forget your pound symbol because this is an ID selector. And the command that will generate this unordered list for us is HTML. So this is a jQuery method. You pass an HTML string to it and it creates that string. So we want to create an unordered list. So we simply type the UL tag that we want here in quotes. Now at this point we could use a loop because we want to create li tags for each object in that dairy array. So rather than write this code repeatedly, we'll just put it inside of a jQuery loop. So underneath the HTML method you just wrote, we use the dollar sign syntax to access the jQuery method. We then invoke the each method that creates the loop for us. What we want to loop through is the variable dairy and then we write a function that we want to execute for each element inside that variable dairy. We pass to the function the index number and in this case our second argument is going to be the serving and that's the portion that you see here under serving. Serving milk, serving yogurt and so forth. Next we'll write this function. The goal of this function as it loops through the dairy variable is to add li or list item tags to the ul tag we created here. So first we have to access the ul tag that we just created so that we can via jQuery methods append to that ul tag all the li tags that are going to be created as a result of this loop. So we need to access the ul tag first and we do that as we always do with a jQuery command and a selector. And in this case, the selector is the same div food list. But now it has, as a child, ul. And it has that child because we created it right here. Once we've selected that portion of the document, we use a method called append, which will append whatever content we created here. We could invoke a function that creates that content for us, or we could literally write what we want to append right inside the append method. And that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to put some string literals here indicating that we would literally like to append to this ul tag an li tag. And then we're going to take that li tag and concatenate it with the serving that was passed in here by way of our dairy variable. So this might look a little confusing because we're saying serving.serving. .serving because serving represents our dairy object, but it has a property called serving, just like it has a property called measure. So we're just saying take whatever was passed into here, which we chose to call serving, but we could have called it something different. And we get that object serving property. And we can concatenate that with more string literals, followed by serving.measure, the second property, and concatenate that with a closing parenthesis. And we'll close the li tag that we started here. 
and we'll terminate the jQuery statement and clean up our closing brackets. To finish up with grains, we'll just do some copying and pasting and modifying the code. Here's the if block that determines if the user has selected dairy. So you can select that and copy it and paste it here inside the else if. Of course, we'll have to modify this because we're not looking for dairy this time. Now we're looking for grain. Next, we'll clean up this closing curly brace because you'll see in a moment that it belongs down here. And we'll go ahead and we'll just copy what we've done here and put it inside the else if block. And again, we'll have to modify this so that it's pointing to grain and not dairy. Starting with line 73, we no longer want a picture of skim milk, but instead we've got a graphic called crackers underscore sm. And instead of looping through the dairy object, we're looping through the grains object. And finally, we'll make sure our brackets are correct. And now I've added this second one here, and I'll delete any extra line breaks we have. And there as well, and I'll need one more curly brace to close my initial if block here. And this curly brace has actually been satisfied with that line, so we'll clean that up. And the same is true of this curly brace, which has been satisfied here. So we'll remove that one. and close the else if block that we started here. So take a moment to proofread all of that, and then you can save this file, and you can go ahead and test it in the browser. Remember, you can only test the dairy and grain options. So here's our initial image, and when we choose dairy, the image swaps out, and due to our jQuery, the bulleted list is created, and you can try grain as well. So we've introduced a number of topics in this video, including the use of objects like dairy and grain. But more importantly, we focused on the fact that the jQuery selectors allow us to once again select elements within the document object model and dynamically act on those elements. In this case, we use if blocks to determine what was selected, and we also learned the attribute method to dynamically create attributes. And we learned how to dynamically generate HTML.